All right, so we've got our user set up. We have a way for them to log in, log out, register, and do all that stuff. One thing we haven't finished yet was how to actually confirm that their email address is the correct one. So before we jump into that part, I'm going to move us over to looking at our signals file again. So if you open up signals, we are going to be doing the email based on or the email confirmation based on a signal. So when the user is created or the user object is created, we want to send out a signal to, well, do a couple things, but first and foremost, actually email the user to confirm that their email is real. That's the first thing that we want to do. And then beyond that, we might want to change how we do our Stripe signal, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. So for now, let's actually just set up a new signal that's based off of if a user is saved. It's called a post save signal. There's also a signal called pre save, but we're going to be using post save. Um, so that signal itself, we first off have to import it, but you might be like, well, what if I don't know what, how to import this stuff or I don't remember or anything like that? Now, the signal documentation, so if you go on signals, this is the actual link for the post save signals. Um, it, well, if you get rid of that, it won't be the post save signals anymore, but it shows you each signal. And to import it, it will show you the actual where it is, but import it, you would just grab something like that. Um, so if we scroll down to there's a pre-save method which happens prior to actually saving the instance or the model. Uh, and then there's a post-save, which is the one we're using. So to actually import this, if you forgot, you could just copy this right here, go back in, paste it, and notice it looks a lot similar to the other ones, but now instead of dot, you would say import, and then instead of nothing in front, you'd just say from. Now we have that post-save signal. It's going to work very similar to this, except now, since we have, it's a post save, it's not necessarily going to send anything with it, right? So user logged in sends in a user instance, right? So it's already sending that in. So it has a model that's already attached to it, which is that user model. But post save does not. We actually have to define it. So sender being the model class, instance, the actual instance that's being saved, as it says. So let's actually see what this does. First off, we will write out post save and then dot connect. And we have to write some signal. So let's just do test post save signal. This is a really long function name, but that's what we'll call it. And then we want to set a sender being to the user. Now, of course, if you notice, there's no user actually imported like what we have on forms. So we can just go back over to forms, copy that one and paste this in here. All right, so I'm going to put this actually above all of these because it, I like to keep these in order. That's actually a good way of a good rule of thumb is to keep them in order. And then I'm going to put the user one right below the stripe one. OK, so now we have the user object or user model actually in there. And now we can just test out this post save signal. So to do that, we just I'm going to give us some space on the bottom here real quick so we can see that a little bit better. We're going to define a function and it's going to be test post save signal. Now, how do we know what actually goes through here? Well, let's actually go back to the documentation. We see these are the different arguments that actually can come through. Sender instance created raw using as in the database and then update fields. Um, well, I'm not actually going to do all of these. I just want a few of them. I want the sender, the instance and created. So what I'm going to do is sender instance created and then args and star star keyword args so keyword args so what this is doing is it's just taking place of these right so it's actually looking for the sender and it's going to assign it to the um, variable sender and then instance and so on um, so now now that we've got that let's just go print sender print instance print created let's actually see what happens here so created, as it says in the documentation, is a Boolean field, and it's going to indicate whether or not the user was created. But let's actually see it in action. Going back into our, our project, let's go into the admin. I'm just going to go into the admin just to make it simple on us. Let's make sure our server is running, of course. 
and it I, I had an error run through because post save signal was not actually defined at the time so let's go ahead and run that server up again all right so now we've got the server running let's go back got this all done refresh into our admin i'm going to go into users and just add a user and i'll just give some name to a user and then we'll go to save all right so it's saved and if we look in our terminal we see the class so the user uh, class so this is the actual model that's being sent and then we have our instance which is the username right there and then true so that means it was created and for me I deleted a bunch of users so I only have the two now so I now have this user okay well let's do something else I'm going to delete these selected users and say yes I'm sure so what I'm going to do now is I'll say I want to actually only do this if the user is created. So I only want to send this like confirm email if it's created. But how about we call this signal something different, obviously, than test post save signal. Do something like user saved, user saved signal or user created signal. So let's call it a user created signal or receiver. Actually, it's not actually a signal. This is the receiver function. This is the signal. Um, so user created, we could call it receiver, let's just call it user created. And then of course we need to actually connect it. So now if the user is created, we'll say if created, this is where we're going to send our email. And this is also where we, well, what if we did the Stripe stuff here instead of when they logged in? Probably make more sense to do it right when they're created, not the first time they log in. That, doesn't fully make sense, right? To, to create the Stripe ID when they log in, it would make a lot more sense to do it when they f are first created. Now, of course, there is the other side of it is maybe we want them to confirm their email prior to logging in, and then thus this would um, actually be correct for us. But that also doesn't matter because we could delete the object. Let's say, for instance, they didn't confirm their email and they had a Stripe ID, but they didn't confirm their email and then we delete the user that doesn't confirm their email, that Stripe ID goes away too. So it doesn't really matter that much. We can assume that most people will confirm their emails because that's, I mean, everyone's kind of trained in that when they sign up for a new service, they usually confirm their email. That is unless they sign up with some social account, but that's a different story. This is, we're sticking to just email here. All right, so we have send email. And then what we want to do is actually this. We want to run this actual function. But I'm not going to do it actually writing this whole thing out all over again. Um, I'm just going to copy this and make it into a function. And I'll say make or define user stripe. Uh, or we could say get or create user stripe and we'll just take in a user okay so what we've got here now is we've got this instance for a user a user stripe now this right here doesn't necessarily have to be just like this right it doesn't have to be in this in the case of well we can grab the user stripe and then if it does not exist we create a new customer and do all that we could also do get or create. There's a, another call for user stripe. So we'll do that one. And I'll say um, new user stripe equal and created equals to user stripe dot objects dot get or create. And now we're gonna say user equals to user, right? So that's gonna be that user. And we're creating the user based on that. Um, so what's going on here? This is essentially doing the same thing as, well, the first part of this, right? So it's gonna create the user. It's either gonna get or create the user. So if it gets the user, it's gonna set it to here. If it creates the user, it's gonna set true to being created, right? So either way, it's gonna put the user uh, stripe object to new user stripe. And if it's created, it will define the second function as created, and then we can go from there. But we want to make sure that this is even valid because there's probably a reason I did this before instead of this. So let's actually take a look at this user stripe model. So if we look at the user stripe model, we see why I would actually keep it as it was. And that's because this cannot be blank, right? So 
what this getter create does, so back into our signal, this is only creating a user. It's not adding in the Stripe ID, where down here, we actually create one with the Stripe ID. So just a little note on that, that could have been done if our Stripe ID could be null. So if we wanted to, we could change that to being null eventually, uh, but I'm not actually gonna do that. I want to definitely create the user, so I'm gonna keep it back as we had it prior. Okay, so now we've got this getter create Stripe, user Stripe. So if they're created, um, we are going to get or create user stripe. So run this function. So I'm just going to call it get create stripe. Or right, let's keep with the Python function there. Okay. So if created, cr uh, get create stripe of the instance because it's the model. Uh, or it's the instance that we have to pass through here, the user instance. So instance, of course, being user instance. So we could even say user equals to instance and then just pass it like that. So it's a little easier for us to read. And now this is gonna try to get the user Stripe and what it's, it's just gonna run that and actually set a Stripe account to it, All right? So I'm gonna comment out this user logged in one although we could still keep it because it's it's either going to get it or it's not. Um, all right, so now we have our get create stripe and we create it here. And then the next one would be to actually send our email. So let's actually test this first. But right off the bat, I already know that there's something, there's an issue that we're going to have doing this in the admin. And that's because of user email. So let's actually go back into the admin and do add new user. Make sure our run server is working. Okay. And we go back into add a new user and we've got username, password, and password confirmation. We don't actually have email in this add user for the auth. So we actually have to go back into the registration to do it. So accounts register. And I'll say ABC, ABC at Gmail, one, two, three, one, two, three, log in. We'll clean up that button in just a moment too. Notice it took a little bit longer this time. It actually did log in. So if we go into our admin and we take a look at our user stripes, we can see that there's two in here. One of them's for ABC. So it creates it right then. And this is also where we're gonna actually send our email for it. Now again, we don't necessarily need this one anymore. So I'm gonna comment the entire thing out and I'll put a note for it if we decide to change how we want to add the Stripe ID. This is where we set it for a user logged, user logged in. Okay, so we've got that as a note, but now realistically we've got create Stripe and then also we will have to send our email here. Now, before we move on to the next video where we're actually going to create the model for handling user registration, I want to take care of um, this right here on the login button. So in form, or actually in views, I'm going to say button btn equals to join. And then the login view, I'm going to put btn equals to login and in our context I'll say btn is btn on both of these contexts and now into our form.html let's open that up what we'll say here then is if btn btn else we're going to use Submit. So basically, if BTN's there, it's going to use that BTN title, essentially. Uh, we could also call it a submit BTN. That might be a little bit more descriptive, so let's actually just do that, just in case, so we don't forget later. Um, call these all the context, at least being called submit BTN. So obviously standing for submit button. We don't have to change the other variables. 
All right, so if there's a submit button, use that value. Otherwise, you submit, and you could probably guess where this is going to go. It's going to go where value is. So I'm going to just remove the spacing from it. So we don't need that spacing. So now I can cut this, paste that in there, save it, go back into our register page, and we see join is here. And then if I go to login, let's log out and log in again. Now I see login. That's that's kind of what we want to see. So uh, just keep that in mind. And that's a smarter way to actually set this page than what we had before. Um, just a very simple way to do it as well. Okay, so now that we've got all this, uh, we are getting very close to actually setting up a model that handles whether or not our email has been confirmed. So we're going to do that in the next one.